Hey guys, Nate here again with the third installment of Data Science Interview Tips. So this is essentially a video series of a collection of tips that I use to get basically what I want to do is communicate that out to you guys, show you a few practice examples on how to implement these tips, and hopefully you'll have a more positive experience in your data science interviews. So without further ado, let's talk about this week's tip. So my tip for you guys this week is when you are in a coding interview to not start coding as soon as you hear the question. The tip is to actually organize the entire approach, organize your solution in your head and maybe on a piece of paper on the whiteboard before even, even writing a line of code down. The purpose of this tip is really just to slow things down and for you to gather your thoughts answer a lot of the unknowns and clear that up with the interviewer before you start to actually write code. Because the worst thing that you could do is actually immediately start coding and realize that you're down the wrong path, right? The interviewer tells you that, oh, you can't really assume this, you can't really assume that, what about this edge case, what about that use case? Um, and by the time you you're able to like understand everything about this problem and the data your solution that you've coded up is completely wrong and you're going to have to start from scratch so instead of doing that my advice is to clarify everything you need to know about the solution before even writing a line of code so this again has several benefits and just to be clear here are some of the benefits so the first benefit, as I mentioned, is to be able to slow things down in an interview. I think this is really important for those that you know may not be experienced enough to just get the solution right away or may be nervous and not thinking straight, but to be able to slow things down, to talk to the interviewer, uh, to write things out um, on the editor or on a whiteboard uh, really helps you just clear your mind and think straight. The second benefit is to be able to clear up all of your assumptions, uh, get clarity on all of the, the unknowns, understand what the underlying question to the question could be, understanding the table structure, the data set structure, and then understanding just the data itself and how it's stored. Right? Those are all very important uh, when you start to, to code up the solution. Then the third one is if, if you did number one and number two correctly, you should have a good idea of what the outline of the solution should look like. What does, you know, what are all of the logical statements that you're going to have to put into, for example, the where clause? What are all the aggregate functions that you're going to need to use in the select clause? So if you're using SQL, like that should make sense to you, right? And so to be able to clarify a lot of the unknowns, to be able to think clearly will allow you to have a, a better uh, picture in your head of what the structure of that solution is going to look like. And number four, if it isn't really obvious, it allows the interviewer to better understand your thought process, better understand how you're thinking through solving the problem, how you're thinking through the edge cases, how you're thinking through the use cases, um, do you understand like data uh, correctly? Do you understand how to manipulate it in the right way? Um, all of that is a conversation to have before even starting to write a line of code. And so my tip is really to organize all of that in your head and on a whiteboard and, or on the editor or on a piece of paper with the interviewer before even starting to write code. So what I wanna do next is hop on the computer and implement this tip on a real practice interview question. All right, so now let's test out this tip on this practice question here. So I have opened uh, Strata Scratch and went to this interview question here. You can follow along with me as well. Um, the, the link to the question to Strata Scratch is in the description below. So what we have here, if you, this is your first time on the platform, we have this question here. We have uh, some hints if we want it, the expected output. So this is essentially what the solution should display. This is the table as well as the underlying columns. Uh, this is the editor and this is how you can run code. So, 
All right, so let's look at this question. So this interview question is from Yelp. It says, find the business and the review text that received the highest number of cool votes. Output the business name along with the review text. So uh, this is a question, and then the data set that we have uh, looks like this. Uh, the, the table is called Yelp Reviews, and then the, the columns are here, right? So seems like a pretty easy question, uh, syntactically easy to code up in SQL or in Python or whatever language that you would be interviewing in. Um, so some people would immediately start to write code and, and then ask questions along the way, right? The problem I have with this is that depending on how you interpret the question, depending on how the data is stored and formatted in the table, that completely dictates the approach and the structure to um, the query to the solution that you would be writing. So the first thing I want clarity on is what columns do I want to use in this question? So I know I want the business, uh, the business name right here, column. I know I want the review text column, and I'm probably gonna want the cool column, right? The problem is I don't necessarily have access to the underlying data and how the, the data stored in the table dictates how I'm gonna write my logic and dictates how I'm gonna approach the solution. So the first thing I wanna tell the interviewer is, what I wanna do is identify the cool votes, the, the most cool votes, right? That's That's, the first step of this problem before you get to identify the business as well as the review text, right? So you need a way to identify uh, which business or which record in the table has the, the most amount of cool votes. The problem I'm seeing is that the, the, the format of this table could, could be, this table could be formatted in one of two ways. The first way I'm seeing is that the table itself um, has basically, it's transactional, meaning that it's, it's one record for every action. That, so that could mean that a user writes uh, a review and then that's the, the review is one record. And then another review, uh, another user writes their review and a second record is then added to that table. So in, in that case, that means that in order to calculate the, the uh, business with the most cool votes or to identify the most cool votes, I would, need to, I, I would need to either sum or count the records, right? So what I can say to the interviewer is, is this table, um, you know, not, is this table transactional? Meaning um, businesses are not unique across the business column and so there's duplicates if so i would want to either use the count or sum function right or um, is this table does it does it store business all of the businesses um, uniquely meaning that each row has a unique business, and all we're doing is we're adding essentially the, um, we're aggregating the cool, the useful uh, that you see here, the funny uh, votes all in one record. I can then write um, table, oops, table stores unique business names and cool votes are aggregated. So once I identify uh, the, the way the data is stored in the table, uh, I can start thinking about how I wanna write the code, how I'm gonna approach the solution, right? So in this case, let's just say that the, the table itself here stores unique business names. So um, the, the number of cool votes is already aggregated on a record level. So we don't need this. But you can see with this tip, right, that this conversation is definitely required before you start writing any code. Because if you guessed wrong, you would have written like 10 lines of code and it would be completely 
trash, right? It would not at all answer this question and you would have wasted a lot of time uh, before being able to rewrite your solution. And by then the interview might be over, right? So the next thing um, I wanna talk about is then uh, the ability to identify the business name once you have the most cool votes, uh, once you have identified the most uh, cool votes, right? So here I'm seeing two ways I can identify the business name uh, once I've identified the most uh, cool votes. One is I can get the most cool votes and then I can just do an order by. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna order by companies and businesses with the most cool votes at the top and then with the least amount of cool votes at the bottom. So it's basically the table reorganized. Um, and then I can limit that by one if I wanna find the company uh, with the most with the most cool votes, right? The, the one company with the most cool votes. So I can say, you know, maybe I wanna do an order by cool votes, the cool column, and then limit one to get top result. What's the problem there? The problem there is that if there are three or multiple companies with the same amount of maximum cool votes, say that they all have 20 cool votes, if I limit by one, I'm only display, uh, displaying one company out of the multiple companies that have basically the most cool votes. So that definitely is not, you know, how I wanna write the solution, but it's very, very important to tell the interviewer that I understand how, you know, SQL in this language that I'm gonna write in, SQL works. I understand that this is what the trade-off is going to be if I write the, the code like this. So what I can do instead is I can use a self inner join. Um, when you get to an interview and you need to answer a question like this or really any coding interview for data science, if you are only given one table, the first thing that should go off in your head is, do I need to do a self join, right? Because joins are very, very common to to test for and if you are not given multiple tables you're most likely going to do some sort of self join some sort of uh, sub query to actually uh, be able to solve this question so bells were already ringing in my head when i read this question and i saw that there was only one uh, one table that we could work with so immediately i think we're going to use a self inner join uh, the the second table is going to be this utilizing this max function here, right? So the second table is going to essentially uh, be to identify the most cool votes. And then link it back to the original table to get business name and review text. All right, so if I run this this whole thought process with the interviewer, they would know that what they would know what the downsides of using an order by limit one is. And instead, if I say like, hey, I'm gonna use an, a self inner join, I'm gonna uh, write a subquery. Uh, basically, my second table is going to um, have the most cool votes. So that way I can filter out all of the other companies that don't match that, uh, that vote count. I can get all of the companies that um, have the most cool votes. So if I run that entire thought process with the interviewer, they understand that that's what I'm going for. They understand uh, that I'm thinking about the, the query and the structure so that all of the trade-offs, all of the edge cases, they're all addressed. So if I just start coding, what that code is going to look like. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is write this, this subquery here, the second table that identifies the most cool votes. So what that's gonna look like is essentially, it's gonna be a max cool as I'm gonna name the column, um, maybe I'll just name it max cool for max cool votes. Oops. 
from Yelp reviews, right? So if I actually run this query here, I get 10. So the max, the, the business or businesses with the most amount of cool votes is going to be um, businesses with 10 cool votes. All right, so this is the subquery, and I'm just gonna package it into the, the, the outer query, which is going to be basically outputting business name, as well as review text from, so what I'm gonna do is just also, this editor a little bit bigger from uh, Yelp reviews alias it with YR. Um, I'm going to join Oops, there you go. I'm going to join that subquery here and call it uh, max cool. So MC. All right. And then I need to now have uh, the on the the keys. So on what right so on max cool there's only one column, obviously, it's going to be easy. So this little inner join subquery, um, the, the key, the only key available is max cool. And obviously, I'm going to then make that equal to the cool column from Yelp reviews, right? So this we know is 10, the value is 10. And then that's going to basically match to all records where the cool count is 10. So if you run this line of code, we get Roka Accor as the business with 10 cool votes, right? And so if we wanted to double check our work, um, we could also type in uh, the cool column so that uh, what we should get is the number 10, which we do get. So we know our solution is correct. So to break it down, basically, my advice is not to start coding immediately after you hear or read the question, right? The interview question. I think what's really important is for you guys to understand uh, what's being asked of you, understand the tables, uh, the table structure and how all of the data is stored in that. And then uh, to basically walk through your thought process, walk through what you think your approach would be with the interviewer so that they can get an understanding of how you're thinking um, and basically you know, guide you into the right direction or clarify a few things that uh, might, be, but might be wrong or unclear. And so by doing this, you basically write out your answer in layman's term right here. And then the only thing you need to do once you get the green light from the interviewer is write the actual thing out. That should be the easiest part, right? Because you should, if you're gonna work in data science, you should be pretty confident in your coding skills. Like this is, this is not difficult code, but understanding um, how to get to the solution or how to get to the code is the difficult part. And uh, that's what interviewers are trying to filter people out for. That's what interviewers are trying to look for, uh, is people that know how to think and approach solutions in the right way. So that's this week's tip. I hope it makes a lot of sense to you guys. I hope you understood how I implemented that tip onto a practice question so you can see how you might want to do that during your interviews. I know a lot of inexperienced interviewers, what they tend to do is just to jump right in and start coding because it's something that they know how to do, right? But in a data science interview or really any technical interview, what the interviewer is trying to do is really understand how you think and solve problems. Is it logical? Is it st uh, structured in the right way? And then after all of that, I'm going to, as an interviewer, I'm going to test whether or not that person knows how to actually write code, right? But that's, that's later on. I first need to understand how this person thinks through a problem that, you know, could be very hard or could be very vague or could have a lot of unknowns. Are they able to clarify all of that and then solution something up that works? So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's tip. I hope you guys find it valuable. If you do like this content, go ahead and subscribe.